All right, folks, uh, Mr. Hansen here again, uh, looking at the next exercise in our introduction to 2D drawings uh, learning pathway. Uh, here we're going to look at uh, working with assembly drawings. So I'm doing this exercise assembly drawings. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at notes and call outs and uh, bills of material. Uh, these are all ways of creating kind of a high level view of your design. So we already looked at uh, using the drawings tool and on shape to create the blueprints with those you know, details of each individual part. Um, what we're going to look at today is how to get an overview of your part, uh, which will help you, you know, take your designs into the workshop, into a manufacturing setting, into some kind of post-production to actually build the physical thing that you want to. Uh, so I got this public document open, uh, courtesy of Onshape, um, and this is the completed universal joint. We've worked on like some of these parts and doing some of the assembly for this, so it should be sort of familiar. Uh, this final version has uh, like some screws inserted to it, and it's got um, you know a bunch of you know fasten uh, mates for for those, as well as the revolute joints we played around. So you're welcome to you know see if you can figure out how the motion works for this object. Uh, but what we're interested to, in today is what's called a bill of materials, um, and that is just kind of like the ingredients list for uh, the recipe that is your blueprints. And so this little button on the right hand side of the screen that's the bill of materials. Um, and it's just that. It's a list of all the different parts that are in your design. Um, it also defaults, it includes quantity counts. So if I'm building this thing and I want to see, you know, how many screws do I need to build this final thing? Well, you know, right there, uh, part number five is all those little screws. I need 16 of those. So that's something helpful uh, to know before you start actually trying to build stuff. Uh, there's part number information. Uh, there's, you know, if you have description information uh, worked up. Um, I'm going to go here to add column and I'm going to select do, ah, name uh, and that'll add a name for each of these parts. And I'm going to let me go ahead and move that closer to the left side of this bill of materials just where it's a little more uh, informative. And so the name for each part uh, is, is going to come directly from the part studio where that part was created. So you notice like this is the part studio for that little center cube and the bushing and axle um, right there. There's a, each of those parts. Uh, the person who created this has gone through and named those parts. And you can always right click a part uh, and rename them to something different. So it's a good idea as you're going through and building uh, your design, uh, you know, in a single part studio and multiple part studios to name your parts as you create them. Give them a meaningful name as you do that. Um, uh, that'll make creating this bill of materials oh so much easier. Um, now, this is not a drawing. This is in the assembly. Uh, so the bill of materials is pulling its information from the actual assembly. Uh, but there are some uh, nifty little tools that actually include this in your drawing. So I'm going to create a, a new drawing. I'm going to select that first option here uh, using the ANSI format. Um, and it's going to pop up with you know the insert information. Uh, what we're actually going to insert here uh, is not not the individual parts. So this is going to be a high level assembly view of our drawing. Uh, something you might use in conjunction with you know those detailed part specific views. Uh, but this is this is here to give us kind of a high level view of the parts that are involved in our assembly. I'm actually going to go over here in my insert menu uh, to assemblies and I want to insert this entire universal joint assembly. Um, let me go ahead and yeah, let's see, change a few of these. I want to make it a little bit bigger. That's a little bit too small. So I'm going to make the scale uh, one to two. Um, and I'm not going to use a front view. Um, for this overview with the bill of materials, uh, I want that 3D view. The 3D view uh, that we've looked at so far is called an isometric view. So I'm going to choose isometric. I'm going to stick that into my design. All right. Um, I'm going to right click this and try to get that shaded uh, 3D view because it gives you a little better uh, feel for what this object actually looks like. So I'm going to click Show Shaded View. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show uh, Phantom Tangent Edges, which will give me 
a little more information about some of the features uh, in this design. All right, so that's the part, and I can you know see this part, and you know this particular drawing sheet may be accompanied by you know a detailed breakdown of each of the individual parts, looking at like the front, top, side views. Uh, but for the purposes of the bill of materials, we want kind of a high level uh, view of this. Uh, so to insert the bill of materials uh, up at the toolbar, uh, there is a bill of materials tool. Uh, I'm going to click bill of materials table, so that's abbreviated BOM. Um, and it'll let you snap this to a particular corner. Typically, like these tables with information about our designs are all the way over at a corner uh, to leave information for the designs itself. So we're, I'm going to use a, a top right corner. There we go. Uh, and it's going to pull the information from our assembly and populate this list. Uh, now, it's obviously like overlapping my parts, so I'm going to you know, click and drag to resize this. Uh, to make it a little bit cleaner, easier to read. Um, now, if you want to edit what kind of information is in this bill of material, you can go back to your assembly. Uh, for example, maybe I don't need that description because in this case that's just the same as my uh, name. So let me remove that description column. If I go back to my drawing, uh, you'll notice that this little refresh button turns yellow up here. Uh, that'll let me update this with the new information. Um, and that's gotten rid of the description column. So the nice thing about the uh, drawings and assembly tools is they automatically update themselves uh, when you change things in your previous design. All right, so there's a nice looking list of my parts. Uh, but if I'm not the person who built this thing, how do I know what parts are what? Uh, we're going to use something called callouts to actually use our bill of materials to identify the specific pieces used in this design. Uh, the callouts menu right next to the bill of materials, now what am I saying, it's in the bill of materials uh, toolbar, so it says call out. Um, and there are like different areas where you can kind of like format the information that you describe for each part. Uh, I'm gonna change uh, where it says circle, I'm gonna change this to let me use underline. Um, and the information I want to use, let's do item table number. I'm going to place a space there. And I'm going to go up to these menus and I'm going to insert the name of the part. Uh, let me go over to this right hand little highlighted area. And I want to include the quantity count for that part. So I'm going to put an X for times for number. Uh, I'm going to go over to this table properties and get the quantity. And so uh, you'll notice now when you mouse over a part, you'll have different you know little X's that pop up. These are good spots to uh, create a call out. I'm going to click, click again, and you'll notice it's got that information that I asked for in the call out tool. Uh, it's the part number four. Uh, this is the universal joint axle. Uh, times four, meaning I've got four of these in my design. So I'm going to add callouts for the rest of these parts. Uh, doo -doo. Let's figure out where I want to put them. Let me do down here. So I'm going to create a call out for the universal flange. I've got the center block. I've got a bunch of these little screws. And just like with placing dimensions, um, kind of what we're trying to do is to display this information as cleanly and unconfusingly as possible. So the actual like parts you select, the you know some of these arrows are crossing each other. That may make it kind of confusing about like what's being referred to in this design. Um, so you may you know need to click and move these around. 
uh, just to make things easier to read and understand. Um, but this right here uh, tells me a lot of information about the design that's going to be built. So this is a you know maybe a useful piece of your blueprints. Uh, in addition to those you know, breakdowns of the different views of the individual parts that tells me how to not just make the individual parts, but how to assemble this thing as a whole. Uh, it's also useful you know, when you're going to the workshop to build something to have an idea of how many parts you need. So for example, um, you know, in this design, we didn't create every single screw. Uh, we use the replicate feature of our assembly. We use some tricks to you know, copy that thing. Uh, so you know, if you got something really complicated, you might not know how many screws do I have? Well, right here, uh, the bill of materials table calculates that based on your assembly. So, you know, going to the workshop, I know I need to get, you know, 16 of these uh, screws. So that's, that's a good uh, bit of information uh, that's going to be useful for actually building stuff. So again, um, I'm probably going to ask you for some blueprints before you guys actually work on physical builds. Um, and this may be something I ask you for is a bill of materials um, and a view of your object indicating those uh, materials but again it's a pretty easy thing to do this took us 10 minutes um, and it's very handy to have when you actually build your designs <laughs>